Paris of my home. They speak of the death of Leon only in whispers. From Fond du Cap to Moulassi, canaries to Montreal. When the lamp is low and the cricket screams, the murder of Rupert makes the blood run cold. My voice. The voices of silence. Silence. That every man must hear. Yeah. During his lifetime. lifetime. What they call. What they call. What they call. Conscience. 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 Conscience is a private marriage of heart and mind. And no man publishes the bands. Who are you? The souls of four men wrestling with purgatory. May their souls rest in peace. No soul can find eternal rest with murder for its winding sheets. It is true. Murder has its own time. Ah, to kill its heart. But to kill a child? What do you want from me? I could not sleep to think of a heartless child. Oh God, to block out the hearts of children? Yes, yes, yes! But what do you want from me? We heard you speak of Rupert Mack and see the wise old man in search of truth. Have mercy on his wretched souls and be our judge as we tell the death and mutilation. I heard it all before. A murder most foul, the pan with two hands and a human heart, a nut with more hot rope, the cop found near the house, a small coffin carried in a hammock by four men from Cash Street to the grocery. It is not news to me. Yet, it disturbs you. You lesser old man! I have no experience in such legal matters. Besides, the penalty has already been paid. Why dig up old bones? There are more bones to be done. Such as? The purpose of the The mutilator. The action of the crime. And the testimony. One. These were unanswered at the trial. Great and hear the secrets of the secrets of the sound tree. Listen well and see. Now, if you go across Ravine Rosette with Beryl on your right and Monte on your left, just near the junctions of two roads, you will find your sheep. In the old days, like you look upon the sun. Chicken hawks they came, cheering our feeding, and pounced on a defenseless chicken. Till fair and cunning loose their evil tongues. And with a pan in his hand, a cod was caught running. Not rewarded, and business is not good. 
in his trouble and affliction, he sends for a friend of his childhood, a man by the name of Montoot Edmund. This Montoot is a cardio, a man who dabbles in herbs and potions, one who can't see very far. We talked to him about the illness and how the men did not pay. Bonsoir, Gaston. You know you will have long. I was just thinking of you when you sent your daughter to call me. Then we can settle our troubles together. Sit down, come. Say, Blues, you know I didn't like the daughter says when she come to call me tonight. I could see that she didn't want to come. What do you have between you? Do not take it for nothing. Things are going to be worse for me than it is right now. Your brow is heavy with worry, St. I said nothing, come. You and I know each other well too long to worry about the jealous of your woman. What I tell her was, if you, Montu, does not give me death, she will give me life. And I was speaking to her in, how do you say it? Parables. Uh, you believe that? <laughs> well, why do you think I sent for you, come <laughs> You really believe that I can give you life? Yes, I believe it. With your power to understand the books and find the right medicine, Monty. Just say a few words and everything will be all right. But for a poor fellow like St. Luce. St. Luce, my friend, it is very important don't you believe these things you see? But both of us have the will to do what has to be done. Even impossible things. There's nothing on earth that can shake up power. What is it? Come Do not say more. I watch you a long time since this. I seen you late in the evening when Morley is bleeding with the sunset. And you grooning on that at last. Fuck up with cooked stalks. And not sleeping because of a sugar mill. That is sicker than you. And me, mon tooth, in compassion for my friend, I cry and try to pray to the spirits to help you. But one voice is not good enough. Please come here. Please. I believe you. What it is you want to see? You remember in the old days, St. Luce? There used to be talk of making sure you have his good, and some would pray while others would dance.
Yes. And some will go to old Chino because his father come from Africa. You remember how frightened he was back then? Hiding in the drains by day and under our beds at night? You remember? Yes, yes, I remember. You know, they say the mill must have a body of a boy before crop. You know, to make a harvest good. They say it's up to now. Not the body symptoms. But, but the heart of a child! Is that so? No. The body is to cut. The heart and hands are what you must use. The head, you must bury under the middle. Mansut, how come you know all these things? I know many things, my friend. What I cannot understand is why some men must suffer poverty in this world when all they need to do to get riches is to gain a little knowledge and exercise the power of their will. I have a door here in this book for who wishes to see and escape this poverty and this misery. You know I cannot read. Tell me, this book, Mansut, it's speaking to you. It holds the secrets of life and death, my friend. It can cure cold fever or ague. you. Charm snakes. Read the minds of your enemies. Make a man as strong as six horses. Or even give you eternal life. But a man must have the courage to do what it says. Or he will fail. And for me, man, too. For me. Gotta cure this honey or oh. Or work the mill. Getting help back is easy, my friend. It is secure enough money that is difficult. That is always the hard part. This one is not for feeble men. You know I am not weak, Montus. Good. Now what I am about to tell you, I never tell anyone in my whole life before. There are powers stronger than us outside this world that bear witness to our testimony. So swear to me, St. Clues to help guard the secret of your life. Swear to me! Not so loud. I swear. Good, now listen. In the old days, when people would go to Papa Juno to see what crops they would have, this was not without reason. Neither when you and I was fighting when we had children missing before, before harvest time. This too was not sans raison. I am telling you, St. Clues, it is not by chance. When a child is missing, and the harvest is good. You mean? Yes. It is a thing that troubled me all my life. And the book gave me the answer. It is this. For your harvest to be good, you must find the sacrifice. You mean a boy on It is the only way. Oh, God. No, sir. The girl will die in your poverty then. But when the honey has strangled you in the night, or the daily mill break down, do not go on one two. I warn you, this was not one for feeble men. The world has no place for weak need sufferers in clues. It is late. Please, please, sit down, Pastor. Then you are with me. Uh-huh. Good. I have thought of this night a long time. So I already write a man in Barbados. And he told me that such a boy is available. About 12 or 13 years of age, with no one to take care of him. And this boy is willing to come. If he was just for the passage money for him. Now there's a boat for the triumph. Expected in cash trees in a few days. If you put half any money, I put fat, and we just got fun out for the turn. And the tears never be over the ship. What is this, it loose? How much you want? I don't know about four shillings, but your four and my four, and another four, I'll be ready. A boy's life for oh, 12 shillings? Alright, I'll ready money for you. Tomorrow night this time. Well, it's decided then. Montut. 
Very well. After all, it was you who sent for me. Sleep well until tomorrow. S sleep well. My hand was trembling like the grass in the wind, and he smiled. He told me that a man called Edgar St. Hill, married to a niece of his, where can he's both to cure my sickness and give the four shillings? I was to come back the next night and he'd have worked the cure for me. After this, you met the man uh, St. Hill? Yes, he was a young man who seemed under the influence of... I didn't of ask you what St. was like. Go on. Mantu come back with the medicine, and then he began to pray. Then he hypnotized him till in my presence, and he make him rub all kind of thing like salt and soap and skin on me. While he doing this, he tell me he going to get the boy in a few days' time. That night, I sleep well. There was no pain. Then, uh... Want to came back with the boy? Yes. That morning I got some feeling very well after the treatment. So I go to Kashi's on business. When I return, I hear Mom to come back with the boy. His name was Rupert Leon Mark. So that night the boy sleep with Mom Tooth and Sintel in my room on some skins on the floor. The next morning I get up to Brayley to make confession. And when I come back, I hear the boy was missing and they arrest Mon Tooth. When I go inside, I find a tin pan on my toolbox. A pan I never see before in my life. I was so afraid. I tried to throw it away. And that is when the police see me and arrest me. That is what I say of my child and all know my story. Listen, I... Both one, two, turn, sin, hell, said you helped kill the boy! Lies! All lies! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the boy slept at your house that night. In fact, who helped cut open the boy? I don't know. I am innocent, I tell you. I only keep the boy for him up my home. I was afraid of Montu that Sintel accused me. I took no part in the death of Rupert Mark. But the boy slept at your house that night and you paid for the money for the passage. Why did Montu leave the boy's body parts in this farm at your house if you were so innocent? The the hands of the child. But where's the heart? It cannot be found. 
answer the question, said Luz. Why did want to leave the pan at your They wanted to hang me, that's why. They wanted to hang me. And hang you they did. Now your soul suffers for a crime you did not commit. In purgatory. It is true. So Montus did not give you lie, but gave you death. Yes. And it was no rope that strangled me, but the same old sickness. You see, Montut had never cured me. Said Luz, leave this place. We have no use for further testimony. Some men prefer to turn on that than to face the truth. Where is the one they call Montoot? He is known by two names. The first, Montoot Edmund. The second, Joseph Lampard. Montoot Edmund. Alias Joseph Lafon. Montoot! Montoot! I will go and look for him. What of St. Hill, the haunted one, whom so much blame was laid upon? Three hundred men and horses searching for days, with fifty pounds reward upon his head for information leading to his capture. Suddenly, one day, they found him starving up a tree. And with one jump, ah! he ah! tried to kill himself. Ah! St. Hill, come there. You have some business. Don't, don't, don't come near me. Leave me alone. I'm warning you. I'll kill myself before they find me. Oh, she's No one can hear you now. You are quite big. I say all that I have to say already. They're telling no lies about me. But I'm telling you one thing. If I find any one of those men, their blood will pay for it. Which man? Since you know damn well what I'm talking about. So don't ask me no stupidness. You cannot harm them where they are. They pay more than you can ever repay. What you must do is ease the burden with true testimony. By the way, who the hell are you? Ah, you were always the impetuous one, St. Hill. Now tell us, why did you give two stories at the trial? Which one is true? Go mind yourself. Answer me, St. Hill. Answer her, St. Hill! Second story, the one I gave at my own child. You know how much imagination a man can have when he's trying to save. Why you do that? Tom, that knife sent him. <laughs> you cry a lot for a grown man. What tears will you leave for the little children? Don't be so hard on him. Well, speak. St. Hill, look, take this piece of paper. I have everything you want to know there. Read it well and see for yourself. This is exactly what we want from you, St. Hill. Your version of the action of the crime. And that is what you'll get. Now, as you know, this is the house of St. Louis. The place we sleep the night we bring the boy. Now let us say this. Where I stand is a deep forest. The place where Rupert Mark was killed. Now read. And I will show you how the deed was done. 
when the sun was setting, I was alone in the house by the table with a bottle. Montoud coming, followed by St. Luce and then the boy. Both sat down at the table, but the boy go on the floor in the corner by himself. St. Luce take a drink, but Montoud did not want it. He was reading all the time. Then St. Luce get up and tell me he want me to dig a hole to bury a pig. I said, all right, I will help you. So we go down in the forest and dig till the sun had set. Montoot come with the boy, a pan in his hand. Montoot look in the hole and tell me it was deep enough. I asked Montoot what the boy was doing here so late in the forest at night. And he tell me it's not my business. So I said, alright, okay. Then Montoot tells him loose to go to the mill house and get a strong piece of rope. When St. Luke's gone, Montu tell me they have some things a man must not inquire. And I said, all right. All the time so, the boy was trembling because the forest in the night is very cold. St. Luke's come back with a long piece of mohot rope. And Montu cut it with his butcher knife for the amount he wanted. When Montoot cut it, he gave me the rope. St. Luce asked him if he remember all what the book had said. And Montoot said he remember everything and he don't have to read it again. Then something strange happened. Montoot fall on his knees and put both his hands in the air. With St. Luce doing the same thing. All the time, they keep saying strange words that I never hear before. I was mad to laugh. But Montu Ooh. tell me to do the same thing. Say they laugh. The boy starts to laugh. But Abbey. he follows us too. Say they laugh. After we get up, Montu tell me to tie the boy's hands behind his back. I know exactly what he's going to do. I tell him I would not. Then Montu do the same thing the night at St. Lucia's house.
When I get up, my head was turning like the blade of a sawmill. I look around and see no one. I ask myself what I was doing here so late in the forest at night. I start to get very afraid. Then I collapse in a deep sleep because my head was heavy. I start to dream some horrible dreams and in each dream I see myself with two men killing a little boy, taking out his heart and his hands. I wake up screaming and I look around. And I know this place was evil, as the stench of blood was in my nostrils, and nothing is stronger than the smell of murder. It's it's then, then I run, I run for my, my life, life in the woods. St. Hill, how well you knew Montut. Not very well. This man they call Montut, as you know, was my wife, uncle. He was a strange man. He said that he had all this big book about money and power and that he could cure all sickness. But he needed my help because he couldn't do it alone. He said that he had a job to do for St. Louis, a man I know very well. And that's how he was going to cure his hernia for him. So we went to St. Louis' house that night. And Montu took some, some strange power. I forget what he was calling it. Um, yes, yes. Hypnotism. That's it. So, how, how, how was it that after that you're trying to say the boy? How well you knew the boy? When is the first time you heard about this 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 boy, Fatima? Rupert. Sometime later. It was then that Montut explained to me that he wanted me to get a boy from Barbados for him and that the passage on board his schooner was about 12 shillings. He had me about eight, and told me to put the other four. And I said, okay, because I did not mind. When I went to town, I saw that the triumph was very easy. But I didn't go on because something, something tell me not to go. After that, when I meet Montut, he asked me why I didn't go. And I lie and told him that the triumph had already sailed when I arrived. Then he get very, 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 very angry. And tell me that I was taking him for a little boy. And that how somebody told him that they saw me on the wharf watching the triumph sail. After that, he told me to give St. Louis back four shillings. And that he was going to Barbados himself from, I don't know, probably the money he got from his Saturday meat sale. So after that, Montu brought back the boy from Barbados? Yes. We went to St. Louis' house that day. When sunset time, St. Louis come and tell me that he wanted my help to dig a hole to bury a pig. Is that what I have done there? Yes, that is correct. So, now that you know the whole truth, I can go now. One moment, St. You stated here in a confession that you lied twice to Montu. Yes. The first time was when I told him that the triumph had already right. seen. Right, and the second time is when you said you had the money at home, but you really used it. Yes. And what you have here is the whole truth. What? What do you mean by that? Nothing, except that after proving yourself a habitual liar, it's very difficult for me to swallow this confession, Saint Hill. Listen! Let me tell you something. I was not bound to show you this piece of paper. As a matter of fact, I have a damn good mind. You will say and answer every question until we are finished with you, Saint Hill. Which one of you can make me? Yes. Therefore, you could not have known anything that took place while under the spell, is that correct? Well, yes. Right. Then how was it that you knew while under this hypnotism that 
You knew Montu took away the boy. Listen, that is not what I said. What I you said was. You did say it, Saint Hill. You wrote it. You want me to read it again? No. Another thing. If you were so innocent, why did you not give yourself up after the trial? You mad? Who would believe me after all those lies they said about me? Saint Hill, you used the same construction in the defense of your child. I'm suggesting to you. You wanted revenge, so you tried to clear yourself by asserting your complete innocence and dare the fun I get to I don't even know who. I am further suggesting <laughs> that this business of hypnotism is pure fabrication, <laughs> Sentel. No. I, I, Sentel. I don't know why I waste my time. You remember what I say? I said that you would not believe me. You mean you stand here and let the tongues of two Old man bamboozle you? Where are they? Wherever they are, I'll find them. I'm mean, the devil at them when I put my hands on them. It's a tell that kill, eh? It's a tell that kill. I'll kill both of them when I put my hands on them. Montoot! Say loose! Say tell, come back here! Montoot! Say tell! Leave them alone. He'll never find them. Then you remain a hunted man. Poor soul, pursued by the visions of dead children. I looked everywhere if you want to, but I could not find him. Was he in here? No. What St. Hill was, his testimony has not changed. He claimed he left a drunken, a drowning man to the lies that have destroyed him. Where they are? I want to see them, where they are? Who is that? A tortured soul who wishes to speak with you. He says that he wants to feel the burden on his mind and leave this place of tortured soul to find you in a rest. In my opinion, it is all a farce. Let me in! Please, let me in! I know that voice. I want to see him. You wish to hear more lies? I have no heart against him. What does he have to say? He claims that he was the only eyewitness to the murder. But wait till you see him. You will be most amused. No one has yet laughed here. Let him in. <sighs> Alphonse! I'll see Alphonse! <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> I know him well. I'll see it. You know my voice? Think well. Yes. I know your voice. I heard it many times I got a cream of bread. Some nights get to know like if it was to spit my head. What is your name? It does not matter. As long as you know me, speak to me and I will listen. Now is the time to free the burden of your soul. I cannot come from a friend. This is a waste of my time. Who ever heard of a blind witness? And why didn't you testify the trial? Please wait. This is important. Go on, old man. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, I tell you. I'm afraid. Come on, old man. Look, I didn't want to see. Oh, what I wish I was more blind for to see. Well, good. Now you have your wish. You no longer have eyes. Have pity on that one. Stick up, old man. Look, it is fast. That has a place in the books of hell. Old man, you cannot see, but you can speak. Let the world hear your wretched story and learn from this sad tale. Are they here? Let's tell you one good. The heart of a boy is lost. I'm not taking our cockles in fear, refusing to speak the truth. Oh! Don't say no more, I will speak. Well, tut, tut, man. Speak in the tongue, start with it, old idiot. So all can understand. There's a song they sing in the heights of country places in Lucy. It is dying now about three men and the heart of a young boy.
travel by Ravi knows it. With Veril on the right time. You want no old man? We heard all of this before. Do not disturb him. Look, all people know Alsi. Have a garden in the forest of Munji. We had us plant yam and peas and so to make my daily bread. But one time after the sun stopped work, I tell her I see this time to find you home. Now I think I track her past 40 years now. But while walking, I'm going to tell her tell not to stop. It have a weight inside me making my feet to drop. So I dig a hole. But by that time inside me making plenty organ. So I crouch, ready to make something. <laughs> And it plain the clay of a cover tree. What do you think I see? Be quiet. Go on, old man. Then after that, what happened? When she no afraid I was, I fixed my pants and I was about to run. But the fair make her rest in the trees. And by that time there was a fun man. I was a hot butcher and I didn't take on his life. And they said if I ever use my tongue, their souls would search for me. What did you do? What could I do? I went to my knees and I and I started to pray. But just then, the last thing I see, before the time I tell you, on top of the highest branch, a black man finished. Not suit. Saint Hill. Saint Luce. Like chicken hogs they went, and stole the heart of a defenseless chicken. Have you any questions for this one? No questions. I take it then that you accept this testimony? We, we told you who we were. We, we know more than you think we do. Well, why call them back at all? Is, is this not further torture? They have their chance to ease the burden of their troubled souls before they start and sell their life to us. You call this justice? This place is not a court of law. Exactly. Is that all you have to say? Is this your verdict after what you saw? You did not hear the full confession of Saint Luke's. No, my tooth. No, Saint Luke. So why should you not take the word of this old man? I swear, I swear for all eternity, for all the suffering of Saint Luke. Get up, old man. May you be gone forever for another give a testimony before this court. No, 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 please don't. I'm sorry, get up! Wait. Wait. You, you have not told your name. And who are you that question us with the power of Almighty Judge? I am the ghost of Montut Edmund. Ah! 